Welcome back everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms coming at y'all today with a video all about some more optics, but specifically about prism optics. A couple of you guys out there have been DMing me and asking and commenting about those of you with astigmatism, how, uh, well, how it'd be easier for you to shoot or see an optic. And I'm always open to hear from you guys sh sending in loadouts or whatever else, magdump underscore Morgan is where you can do that. And make sure you're following our backup page that we currently have on Instagram, Classic Firearms Picks, because while well, our main account is disabled because, well, the social media people don't like guns, so. There you have it. Anyway, we're working on getting our account back up, but in the meantime, Classic Firearms Picks is where you can find us. So, prism optics are cool. Unlike the traditional scope, which uses a series of lens to reflect light into a specific plane, this uses a prism, hence the term prism, all right? And what we've got here is the Swamp Fox prism optic, a one to 24, one by 24, I should say. And this thing is pretty cool. The difference between a prism and something like a red dot that you see here with either like the Aimpoint T2 or the Trigicon MRO or the Vortex Venom is instead of using a light that reflects onto a lens and back at the shooter's eye, which could be difficult for those of you with astigmatism, it's a etched reticle, which is nice, which is what you typically see on like a magnified scope but it can also be illuminated, so you shouldn't be getting a bunch of fuzzy and stuff like that, right? Because it's a much more crisp and clear reticle, unlike what you would get with like even holographics, which aren't always the most crisp and clear reticle unless you throw a magnifier on there, then it really cleans it up. It's kind of funny. But anyway, prisms are great in that sense, but also too, they're really rugged optics. One of the most popular prism optics out there is actually the Trigicon ACOG using a prismatic telescopic optic, that is exactly how the ACOG falls under or what classification it falls under. And I've got it here on this uh, Gucci'd out little scar that I've been playing with because you know me, if I don't add at least 10 pounds to it, I'm probably not going to enjoy it. But one thing I do enjoy is the fact that it's ambidextrous because the reciprocating charging handle always annoys me, but throwing it onto the right hand side like an AK, it's actually pretty cool, all right? so. Thanks, FN, for making it at least ambidextrous. But anyway, the Trigicon ACOG is what we're here to talk about, not everything else I've got going on on the world's best battle rifle. This guy right here is sweet. And something to kind of consider when it comes to prism optics is a lot of them are magnified. Now, you can get the Swamp Fox blade, like what we have here on the LWRC, is only a one power. So that means you could co-witness it with some iron sights if you wanted to. So no magnification here. If for whatever reason, let's say it gets damaged, uh, I can pop these up and I can go with it. However, these are a little bit more reliable than your standard red dot simply because of that etched reticle. And that is also kind of true of holographics as well. As much as I love my holographics like EOTech, as much as I love like the Aimpoint T2, the Trigicon MRO, uh, it having an etched reticle means it's battery safe. So if your batteries fail, you can still pick up that reticle. Now, of course, in your complete low light situations, you're gonna need a flashlight, maybe have some tritium inserts on your irons, something like that, but hey, no big deal. But one thing that is really cool about these guys is first off, because they are a prism optic, not having to use a bunch of series of lenses, they can be a lot more compact and they're super durable, like I mentioned with the ACOG, which is probably the most combat proven and rugged optic in the world. I'm willing to put that statement out there, all right? So prisms in another sense too, you don't have that unlimited eye relief that you do get with red dots and holographics and things along those lines. You do actually have a set eye relief on this guy. Now granted, this one right here being not magnified at all is very, very nice. I, you have a lot, a huge margin of error. You don't have to have exact same cheek weld and everything else to get a good sight picture without any scope shadow, which is great. Call it a scope, but it's not technically a scope, but you get what I'm saying, right? You don't get any of the shadow on the outside of the lens, which is fantastic. So I can pick up, you know, <laughs> until I get really close to it, which still you can get a really good sight picture. Don't advise shooting it that way. You'll look like a pirate soon enough. Uh, but even all the way back here, I'm starting to pick up some scope shadow, but 
well, again, a huge margin of error. And that's something I like about red dots for tactical shooting, something like that. You need to get quick on target. You're not going to have that perfect side alignment every single time. Red dots are a little bit more forgiving. But you can still do some awesome CQB work if you need to on this guy. You can even on the magnified prisms. And there's actually a term called the bend and aiming concept. And I'll explain what that is really quick to the best of my simple ability. So the ACOG that I have on here is a three and a half power. These can go anywhere from three and a half, four, six power, and that's typically about where you see them as far as prisms go and ACOGs, okay? With that, you do have an etched reticle in there, great. But because you are magnified, picking up something indoors or you know room to room can be a little difficult however with training and a lot of practice you can actually train your vision to pick up the reticle with your dominant eye and your field of view with your non-dominant eye and be able to focus the reticle I know this sounds like a lot be able to focus the reticle on your target utilizing your non-dominant eye so it's something as simple as being able just to focus and you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing on camera because only I can, right? But it's something as simple as being able to focus with this eye, even though it's my non-dominant, on my target and then placing the reticle of the optic on the same target. It's pretty interesting, but it's called the bend and aiming concept. And, well, check it out. Do a little bit of research and have some fun with it because it's not a precise shot that you're getting off with that but it's CQB. It's minute of man at that point and you're just hoping to hit your target because, well, you're in a crappy situation if you're having to clear rooms anyway. You're at a serious disadvantage, so go with lasers and stuff and, I don't know, maybe frag out, right? But uh, anyway, all that being said, prisms are great for those of you with astigmatism, for those of you that are looking to maybe try out just a different optic, especially an affordable, nice optic like the Swamp Fox Blade again. All in all, they're just good. I am a huge fan of prism optics, personally. I don't run a whole lot of them because, well, I haven't had a whole lot in-house here to play with, but the Trigicon is something that I am very familiar with. I love it, and the ACOG I'm specifically talking about, and I uh, have a few of these. <laughs> so what more can I say about prism optics other than what I have already? Completely reliable very durable, they work, they can be illuminated or non, or in the case of the ACOG, they can use a tritium insert for low light and a fiber optic for your natural light or faux light, whatever you wanna call it, right? So an awesome, awesome uh, option for those of you out there that again, that might be struggling with the stigmatism or something along those lines, okay? And like I said, if you're just looking to get into maybe a new optic, check those out, they're pretty cool. A rugged, reliable optic, again, having that edge reticle, solid. Now that's not to say that these are no good because these are fantastic, right? I, again, am a huge fan of the MROs, of the aim points, of Vortex, and so on and so forth. There's so many options out there that it's actually kind of cool that you as the shopper, the buyer, the shooter have these options. Do your research and I don't know if you've got a buddy that's got a few, go shoot them, right? If you ever see me at the range, take aim training, come by, say, hey, what are you shooting today? Got anything I could try? I might have a couple rounds laying around for you. All right. Ammo getting is starting to lighten up just a little bit, so that's good. But uh, anyway, I'd like to hear from you guys down in the comment section below. What are some other recommendations that you might make to those of us that might need a different type of optic solution, all right? Again, prisms, I'm, I'm a fan, all right? But on our current giveaway, it is a red dot. It's the Vortex Venom on this guy right here. Fourth of July has just recently passed and we figured since this was gonna be our giveaway that overlapped Independence Day, we need something that screamed America. So why not an M1A with a 50 round drum, comes with a 10 round mag, a 20 round mag, and yeah, we're throwing in the 50 round drum. If I could get it right, that'd be great. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it off there, guys. Head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries on this guy. SOCOM is the code word for this one. Again, I'll see you guys down in the comments section all about some prisms and uh, yeah, what you guys recommend. This is actually a pretty cool looking gun, I like it. Oh, I did see one of you guys comment too that the M1A does not, does not, absolutely, it does not need a pistol grip. It shouldn't have a pistol grip. 
laughing EBR. All right, that's, that's all I'm going to say, but I'll leave it off there. God bless you guys. Appreciate you all in your business. We'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.